You're listening to the Art Cityscape. Welcome to another episode of the Art Cityscape podcast. As you know, we've had an unprecedented winter. We know that many in our community are worried about this spring's runoff and potential flooding. On this episode, Public Works Director Brad Stapley and Director of Administration Patrick Money will provide some insight on what the city has done and is doing to prepare and what you can do to help. What are some of the things that the city has done to prepare for what might be unprecedented runoff? So believe it or not, back in 1982-83, I was a a student, an engineering student at BYU, and I went through the 82-83 flooding. Um, I was there. I saw the landslide at Thistle. I saw the the closure of I-80 when the winds came up on the Great Salt Lake because it was lapping over. Um, I was here when Utah Lake came up and more or less encroached up into the community just next to it. And so I've seen this area. Um, I'm back here again some 40 years later. And we've been doing a lot of work here in the city to get things moving, to help residents prepare themselves, to get the city prepared and so forth. Um, one of the first things we did was what we've been doing is we track the snow water content at Powell Creek Canyon. We've been looking at that clearly. And as we noticed in mid-December that things were starting to really pile up, we started forming um, kind of a plan of attack on what we would do to get us through the spring runoff. And one of the first things we did was, as far as the residents go, is we sent individual letters to all property owners that live along the creek, that those that have frontage on the creek. And they got an individual letter encouraging them to go through and start cleaning things out. And we developed a program to where we had a private contractor come in and if they could drag their debris out to their front yard along the street there, we'd come by and chip it up and haul it away. And that program was very successful as an initial stab at getting those things taken care of. Then, um, as we kept watching the snowpack and it kept getting higher, we started looking at what we could do internally that we usually do every year anyway. And we had our streets crews going out and clearing debris along city-owned properties, um, along bridges and irrigation takeouts. So all the way along the creek where the city has a property interest, we were cleaning those out, including parks and so forth. Um, as the snowpack kept rising, we actually sent a second letter out to the residents along Hobble Creek, um, encouraging them to help others around them if they've taken care of it themselves. And this is where I think a lot of the ecclesiastical organizations got involved where we got a great city um, reaction to this, to where they started planning. We initiated sandbag um, filling stations, three places throughout the community, and we added a fourth at at Hobble Creek Park. And as we started getting people involved, um, it seems like the citizen groups took over as far as getting things along at the neighborhood level. Patrick is at one of our sandbag locations where residents are filling up sandbags to use at their homes. We're here at the uh, one of the three sandbag filling places that we've uh, established here in the city. This one just happens to be up by the uh, field house or the old swimming pool up near the high school. The other two locations are down at the community park in the West Fields and up at the mouth of the canyon just above the turnoff to Bartholomew Park. So we encourage citizens, which this is for, to come and to fill the sandbags they need to help uh, mitigate their flood uh, risk. And uh, other cities are also providing the same services, uh, and we encourage those citizens to use their community's uh, filling stations as well. Where can residents get information about current creek flows? The city's website has a great way to get into finding out how Hobble Creek is actually flowing. Um, If you go to the city's website and click on Hobble Creek, there's an icon there that would help you go through, and it tells you where you can find sandbagging stations. It also has a link to... Um, the USGS, or I guess it's a USDA, Hobble Creek meter that shows what the creek's flowing at. We found in the past, historically, that the creek, when it's clean, can carry about 700 cubic feet per second. So far this year, we've gone up to 72 cubic feet per second. So it can actually handle about 10 times the flow, maybe a little bit less, if it's clear. And that's the key part here, is to have people go through and clean out in their backyards where they have creek frontage to get that debris out of the creek and away from it so when the high waters come up they don't grab the branches and and clog and make blockages throughout the community. Patrick is in the backyard of a property that goes right along the creek. 
He'll explain the importance of keeping the creek debris free. So here we are in the backyard along Hobble Creek. And as you can see behind me, the creek bank uh, across from us could use a little debris cleanup because when the waters rise, and in this particular area will be about three to four, possibly five feet higher when the creek is at running at its capacity of the 750 some odd cubic feet per second, it has an opportunity to sweep all of that debris and cause that to go downtown. And that's why we've asked that we have residents clean their banks and make sure that they're clear so that they, we have a channel for the water to go through and not cause any hang up under the bridges with the debris which causes the flooding. Are there any big changes that have been made since the catastrophic flooding of 1983? So one of the changes that's happened since the, the floods of 82, 83 is the county actually installed what we call a debris basin up at the mouth of Hobble Creek. Now the debris basin initially can be a flood control basin, but its main purpose is truly to stop debris from the canyon coming down into the city itself. Patrick is at the debris basin to give us more insight. So instead of having to try and, and, and push all of the trees, all of the branches, all of the brush, anything that would gather through these uh, runoff from the canyons, and then try to navigate that through town, it stops here at the debris basin, and the county is good about having uh, equipment up here and on a daily basis uh, cleaning out the debris so that the water can flow into the creek without having that extra debris. In what sense is the spring runoff and potential flooding predictable, and what can't we predict? So one of the questions that, that we've been getting in telephone calls and on the, on the social media is, how do we know when something's going to happen or what's going to happen? And in reality, everything now is temperature controlled. And so back in 82, 83, we had cooler temperatures. And then about mid-May, mid we had rain and we had hot temperatures that got in the 80s and 90s with still a huge snowpack up in the mountains. And when you get that scenario where you get rain and high temperatures, the snowpack's gonna come up, off a lot faster. And that's something that nobody control, can control. And so what we do is we watch the temperature and literally we just see as long as it stays in the 50s, 60s, and even the 70s, it should come off slowly. If we get into sustained higher temperatures coupled with rain, we could have problems along with anybody else along the Wasatch Front. And one of the great things is, is we have a lot of professionals out there watching this, watching the temperatures, and there'll be notifications and so forth that will help us anticipate the flows. Do you have any final thoughts on the spring runoff? And we've got some long-term people here in the city that are working in the Public Works Department, including myself, that we've been here, I've been here 19 years, and we know how the creek responds and so we know where the trouble spots are. We know where we have to go after and look at bridges and so forth. What we don't know is the trouble spots in people's backyards that have changed maybe because a big tree has fallen down their backyard and they haven't done anything about it. And this is where we go back to encouraging citizens to do their best to clean out their areas of the creek. Thanks for listening. To summarize today's discussion, the city is closely monitoring this spring's runoff. Since major flooding in 1983, the county created a debris basin at the mouth of Hobble Creek Canyon that serves the purpose of keeping the canyon's debris out of the creek so that it can sustain high and fast flows. It's crucial that residents with property along the creek clear out debris to keep the high flows free of debris. There are sandbag stations set up throughout the city, including at the Springville Fieldhouse, at the trailhead on Canyon Road, and at Community Park. Residents should feel free to come fill some up and take them home. Finally, there's tons of information available at springville.org. Thanks and have a great day.